right. So my last example is HLB Lighting. It is a little bit of a larger company um, with seven offices around the US. They um, make architectural lighting designs for all kinds of buildings, really wonderful products. And they've got a fantastic culture. And they already had to be online a lot because of having all these offices. And they've been very good about creating one culture even though they started in New York, but now they're in Boston and LA and San Francisco and Denver and um, Texas and Miami. Um, so they're already connected and I had been working with them to do open book management. So um, they already had that fantastic communication. But right at the beginning, they got people working from home. I think their first day was something like March 16th. And then um, they held this town hall meeting where they did their usual run through of the numbers, but then they really checked in. They told everyone all the things they're doing that I'll tell you in a second. Um, they made sure everybody had the IT support that they needed to work from home. And then uh, they did a lot with mental health. So um, they did all the things that you have to do to manage their cash. Uh, they got their PPP, they drew down their line of credit, um, and they actually added a weekly cash flow report to their weekly huddle where they go through the numbers. So everybody knows exactly where they stand with cash. And I know that all businesses won't be that open, but they were able to do it. And it gave people a great degree of um, comfort knowing that the company was 100% on top of cash and they, they actually knew what the cash position was. So uh, just like uh, Tasty Catering, they focused on reducing expenses um, top management took an immediate pay cut um, and they managed all their other expenses as well. And they do uh, twice a day remote meetings, at least in the beginning. Everybody was meeting in the morning to make sure that they knew what they were supposed to do and then meeting in the afternoon to just check in. And some of them were playing games and just connecting because it was so strange for them to not be meeting in the office. Um, if you can advance. I have a little more about them. There we go. So yeah, they have fantastic IT support and they had been working on this initiative to get everybody on the right platform so that they could collaborate between these seven offices. Um, because many people have their young children at home and they're schooling them um, as well as working, they did support employees um, to go part-time or even hourly if they had to and they were able to. And I thought that was a wonderful benefit. I know every business can't do that, um, but that was really, really helpful. And then they, they created a chart on mental health to see if you were a one, a two, or a three above the line or a one, two, three below the line. And they wanted to make sure everybody was doing okay. And, and that was a really interesting way to actually make it a little bit quantifiable. Um, but the point is they were checking in all the time because instead of being in these seven offices, they were suddenly in you know, a bunch of different homes and they wanted to make sure everybody was okay. Um, and then they set a COVID protocol for the entire company for in-person meetings, so they wouldn't have to adhere to client protocols. And I've actually done that with several other businesses, because if you have your protocol, you could say, oh, I'm sorry, we can only do in-person meetings under these circumstances. Um, so to have that proactively in place, I think is good. Um, and then I encourage them to just have some water cooler time on Zoom, where they could connect, they could share things with each other, and um, during some of the really important racial justice conversations that have happened in the last month or so. Um, this team is from all around the world, from a very diverse background. And so they were able to really share and connect and talk about what they were going through during that time because they had created that water cooler um, uh, conversation structure. And perhaps, um, and you had mentioned it in another example where management actually wasn't on certain um, in certain meetings or Zoom rooms or something, maybe around the water cooler. Uh, so I'm thinking that that's number one, that's an important. So the ability to welcome and, and, and encourage the employees to reach out to each other, you know, in a certain, in a certain format that you would normally, because if you were in the office, that's what would happen. 
That's and, right. And, and I really like the idea of, um, because it's very difficult for employees to raise their hands, especially because you're in probably a lot of times in a large meeting, raise your hand and say, I'm struggling or I have um, childcare issues and things. So yes. for them to be out front and say, we recognize that this is undoubtedly the case for some of you might be easier than for for people, employees to open up about it. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's great. Right. And, and another really great thing about this company is that um, they've invested a lot in their younger generation of up and coming leaders. So the group that I trained to do open book management was a very diverse group in their 20s and 30s. And that group has become central in getting them through this time because they're so connected with each other and with, um, with the employees. So that's been really nice to see. And then the, the final slide about HLB just shows how much fun they have. So at the beginning of their weekly huddle, they do something called food for thought, and it could be anything. One day they had me play the violin. Uh, they had Nathan play guitar. Um, a lot of times they'll wear costumes. So uh, the Denver office, Michael is often uh, wearing costume. And that day he was Waldo. So somebody typed in the chat, where's Waldo? And we had to scroll through and find him. Um, the day that they did that first huddle was around St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so Eddie Garcia was leading the huddle and he you could see he was a leprechaun. Um, and then finally the Miami office, this was pre-COVID, but I had to throw it in. They all wore mullet wigs just for fun. I'd like to share that yesterday Pursuit had a virtual baby shower. Two of our key staff members are expecting um, in the next couple of weeks and it was really wonderful. Everyone made a super effort to get together on Zoom and it brought up such good feelings. Yeah, nice. amongst the organization, it was great. Thanks. Yeah, each of these offices did different things. The first week, the Denver office apparently got together and told dad jokes. Um, and some of them played online games. So they've just found ways to really stay together and keep those connections in addition to working really hard.